In the previous video, we explored the building blocks of databases, tables, rows, and columns. These structures hold the valuable information that drives our applications and websites. But what happens when some of the information is missing? In this episode, we'll delve into the concept of null values in SQL and how they signal the absence of data within our database structure. What is the meaning of null in the first place? Null signifies that a data value is missing or unknown. It is used when the exact value is unknown or unavailable at the time of data entry. It is not the same as zero or an empty string. But before we talk about how it is different from zero or empty string, let's understand why to use null. There can be situations where the exact value for a particular data point might not be available at the time of data entry. For instance, a new customer might not provide their phone number during the initial registration. In this case, the phone number column for that customer record would be populated with null. Null allows you to represent the absence of information without leaving the field completely blank. Let's look at the key differences between null, empty string, and zero. Like I mentioned before, null represents absence of value. Empty string is an empty space, which is like an empty box that can potentially hold characters, but currently has none. Zero value, as in zero sales. Null is treated as special marker, and though it is empty, empty string holds a valid value. It's the same for zero. It holds a valid value, which is zero. Data type of the null, of course, since there is no data, the type of data is not applicable for null. Whereas empty string's data type is text, and for zero, it is numeric. Null require special checks to understand if the table has null data or not. Whereas for empty string and zero, it can be directly compared. Let's look at the examples. For null, the product's release date is completely unknown or hasn't been decided yet. In this case, the release date of the product is represented with null. For empty string, the product information is being entered, but the release date is currently unavailable and empty string is used as a placeholder for that. Lastly, number of products on a specific release date is zero. Think of this, unknown sales versus unavailable sales versus zero sales. That's the fundamental difference. So what are all the things to know about null? Related to data retrieval and comparisons, when searching for data, null values require special handling using functions like isNull. Empty strings and single character strings can be directly compared with other strings during data retrieval. Data integrity. Constraints like not null can be used to prevent null values in specific columns, ensuring critical data is always present. Empty strings and single character strings wouldn't violate not null constraints. We'll talk more about these constraints in the next episode. Talking about the functionality, null values can sometimes cause issues with calculations or functions in SQL queries. While empty strings and single character strings might behave differently depending on the context. So what are the best practices here? Decide whether null, an empty string, or a single character string best represents the missing or empty data for a specific column. Use not null constraint for mandatory data fields to prevent accidental blanks. Be mindful of how these data types behave in comparisons and calculations with your queries because each of these will behave differently. By understanding these distinctions, you can ensure accurate data representation and avoid potential errors when working with your database in SQL. See you in the next one.